with that, I'd like to turn it over to Al Parker, who I'm really hoping is dressed. Ah, there he is. <laughs> Al. And without further ado, I'd like to welcome Al Parker. <laughs> By the way, another little trivia on Al Parker. Uh, he told me yesterday was he was just he just came back from a trip to New York City where he did a ceremony down there, which I believe is going to appear in the New York Times this weekend. <coughs> so that's quite an accomplishment. Here he is, Al Parker. That's uh, good afternoon to all of you. They got the no when he said he is going to do What Let me translate that for you. I don't know if anybody here speaks Seneca, but what I said was I, I wish to acknowledge all that have gathered here this day. I give a thanksgiving that uh, you have arrived safely and you are well this day, and I ask that you listen to what I have to say. Oyendo ni kyaso ngwenwe ka. Oyendo is my name. Can you say that? Oyendo? Oyendo. All right, now you speak Seneca. Okay, that uh, translation is, uh, he got it. That's the English translation. Now some may ask, what did I get? That's the mystery about the name, right? I am a Seneca of the uh, Heron clan, and I was born in the Gowanda area south of uh, Buffalo, New York. I lived for a few years on the uh, Cattaraugus Reservation. Uh, my dad moved our family to the city of Buffalo and I pretty much grew up in the city of Buffalo and I was educated in the Buffalo school system. So I, I went through all the history classes just as you did and all that kind of early education. But uh, I want to thank Bruce and Mark and all those that are involved for the invitation for you know coming out this afternoon spending some time with you. We've got a great day here, and so does Point. And I wanted to just kind of briefly, a um, uh, brief time that I'm here today, just give you a little bit of background. On, on, uh, it was mentioned here that uh, we're in the territories of the Seneca and Cayuga people. And if you're familiar with the uh, five original nations, this might be a test for you, okay? Any teachers out there too? But there, there were five original nations that make up the what we call the Haudenosaunee. Can you say that, Haudenosaunee? Okay, the translation of that is people of the longhouse. That's how we're, we refer to ourselves. When the French-speaking people came to this continent, uh, they referred to us as Iroquois. And if you're across the border up in Canada, across the Niagara River, they would say Iroquois. So you're both right on both occasions, okay? And then, of course, the English-speaking uh, people came to our, our territories here, uh, which encompassed the better part of the state in New York State, and they referred to us as initially five nations, but in the early 1700s, the uh, Tuscaroras were forced out of their homeland down in the Carolinas, and uh, they sought um, protection. They knew about our people, the Confederacy, and it was through the Oneidas that brought them up into the state, currently the state of New York. And that was early 1700s, and there seems to be some, uh, some differences uh, on the uh, date, uh, you know, when they came up here. So they became the Six Nations. And of course, uh, the English reference to our people would be the Six Nations. And of course, we, we consider the territories within within our uh, original uh, lands here within the state of New York. Uh, it's kind of like a longhouse, as I mentioned, people of the longhouse. And as uh, as you think about it, it's, it's laid out in that fashion. And the original longhouses, they had two doors, no windows, 
So on the far east end of the territories were the, can you tell me who's located of the Six Nations on the far east end would be the Mohawks. All right, you're doing good. And coming westward, the next nation would be the Oneidas, exactly. And then, of course, our central uh, Grand Council or Grand Council convenes, all the Six Nations convene and, and conduct their, uh, their uh, government, form of gov 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 governance. We have uh, the uh, Central Council Fire just south of Syracuse, and they become known as what people? Onondagas. And as we further come westward, we then come upon the Cayugas. I, I heard something out there. I wasn't sure what I heard. And of course, in the far western end of the territories would be the Seneca people. All right, you passed. Okay, now, uh, and of course, the uh, Oneidas were originally located down states, just kind of south of uh, Onondaga area. But of course, uh, currently the Tuscaroras are located just north of Niagara Falls, <coughs> uh, between Niagara Falls and uh, Lewis. And uh, of course now, uh, again, the Tuscaroras became adapted you know, into the uh, Six Nations. And uh, so there, our central government is, is conducted at, uh, at Onondaga. So when our leaders come together to discuss the issues of the day, they do convene at uh, Onondaga. Six Nations. Now, one other event, you know, through history was that way back in the 1700s, we had some uh, problems with uh, uh, the uh, imposing people that were coming in, including the Dutch, the French, the English, and, of course, eventually the, the, the uh, colonists. And, of course, they were seeking land, and uh, the imposition began. Great conflict, the clash of cultures began, and uh, the uh, the regalia that I wear today is is a copy of uh, my relations, and that would be a copy of uh, Red Jacket. And Red Jacket's name uh, was uh, Sagoyawata, and that translates to he keeps them awake. He was born about uh, he was born about uh, 17 uh, in the 1750s. Okay, it's a little more comfortable. 1750s, he passed in 1830, and uh, thereafter, another descendant of mine was uh, Healy Samuel Parker. And if uh, we have any historians here, you're, you're well aware of uh, his achievements. And uh, as uh, was mentioned, I just uh, came back from uh, New York City, my trip to the uh, Smithsonian Institute. I had a had the occasion to visit uh, Grant's tomb, and uh, my kids used to ask me who's buried in Grant's tomb, so I had to tell them who was buried in Grant's tomb. <laughs> and I, it, it was a whirlwind. Uh, it was a whirlwind trip, and everything that you can think of, uh, which uh, you can relate to New York City, is I passed by just about all the places: uh, Central Park and the Empire State Building and uh, Statue of Liberty. I, I went past all of them. It didn't stop, but my on my way to the Smithsonian Institute and, of course, Grant's tomb, and in which I had a, a great welcome uh, by the administrators, uh, superintendents, and, and uh, curators, and uh, project coordinators in both places. So. And then, of course, uh, I was accompanied by a reporter from the New York Times. And uh, you'll see that on the Internet, I believe, tomorrow, and, of course, uh, in uh, publishing uh, on Monday of, uh, in a few days. So it was a great trip, and uh, I met some great people, and the, these things continue as I make my round share. And of course, the occasion in New York City was to attend a uh, Civil War forum, where the uh, groups that came together, Civil War Roundtable, and kind of a splinter group as a Civil War uh, forum. So we had quite a gathering, and the people came from uh, New Jersey, they came from Connecticut, they came from you know some distance. And uh, they meet, uh, I think they meet, they meet uh, monthly. And I was kind of uh, uh, squeezed into their agenda because the original, uh, the original uh, author was invited in some while back, so there was a commitment. 
the newest book that's written on Ely Parker uh, was written by a fellow named Peter Johnson, and it's been out about a year now. And of course, um, he was the keynote speaker, and because I came in kind of last, I was kind of the, you know, the second guy there. But I ended up going on first, uh, speaking first. That kind of caught me off guard, but uh, it, it really isn't a problem for me. And then, of course, uh, the uh, reporter had been with me throughout the day, so they were there to snap in pictures all day long. And uh, so I'll, I'll be surprised what, what ends up in the New York Times. But it, it was a great trip, and um, I had the occasion to uh, talk a little bit about both Red Jacket and uh, uh, Elias Parker. And if, uh, if you're somewhat familiar with the, the Civil War time period, uh, probably the most notable, uh, most notable uh, event or achievement uh, as far as Elias Parker is concerned was his presence at the signing, uh, the surrender of uh, General Lee to General Grant in Appomattox Courthouse, April 9, 1865. I, I think I've got a collection of pretty much most of the books that have been written on Ely Parker. And that most recent book by Peter Johnson, is, is, it's, a, it's, a, it's a novel. So I, I, I tend to stay away from novels because I don't, I don't want to get facts and fiction, you know, fictitious stories mixed up. So uh, novels are not part of my reading. But um, it, it was great. I had the occasion to uh, talk a little bit about with some of the people that, that are uh, pretty much authorities on that Civil War period. They'd like to get into those debates on who was, who was fighting who and generals and what have you. But uh, uh, my focus generally is, uh, and not a lot, is no, a lot is known because, you know, Ely was the assistant to uh, Ulysses Grant. <coughs> And both, uh, both Red Jacket and um, Ely Parker have had uh, direct contact with, uh, in 1792. Uh, Red Jacket was awarded a, a very large medal by uh, George Washington for his uh, support and promotion of in, in friendship and, and peace and had direct contact with uh, George Washington. And of course, Ely, uh, at a very young, tender age, teenager, uh, he dealt with uh, President Polk initially and a number of presidents thereafter. Uh, he was uh, admitted, he was, uh, he was brought into the uh, Union Army uh, through uh, uh, Abraham Lincoln, approved that, uh, that uh, recruitment, you know, bringing him in. And, uh, but he, had, uh, he quite, had quite a life. And of course, like I say, there are several books uh, William Armstrong on uh, Warrior in Two Camps with Parker. Uh, Life of Ely Parker by uh, Arthur C. Parker. And Arthur C. Parker would be my distant uh, cousin. So that Parker name has quite a, there's quite a legacy there. And I'm certainly proud to, to wear, wear that name and, and title. And uh, of course, uh, Ely, uh, he was a leader. He was a leader in the Confederacy. He was a chief, uh, we call Hoyane. Yane is a, 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 a person of a good mind. Our, our chiefs are civil leaders. We had war chiefs uh, many years ago. We no longer have war chiefs. Maybe we ought to stir them back up again. <laughs> Latest happenings here. But um, as a, as a uh, leader within the Confederacy, uh, he held one of the 50 titles that is held by the uh, Iroquois Confederacy. Uh, Red Jacket didn't hold one of the original 50 titles, Sequoia Wata, but uh, he, he was a uh, faith keeper of the Wolf Clan. And Ely also belonged to the Wolf Clan, and I already mentioned to you that uh, I belong to the Heron Clan. And of course, we are a, a matrilineal society. So the names have nothing to do with the fathers in, in our tradition. And uh, I, 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 I was very curious about when I was growing up, you know, because I heard about Ely Parker when I was a little guy.